Welcome to Worship at Centenary on the second Sunday of Advent. I'm Pastor Michelle Hargrave with Pastor Erica Kozer, and we're delighted to have you join us in worship today. If you're joining us for the first time, we invite you to just make yourselves at home here. And uh, we also invite you to check out our website at mankatocentenary.org. There you can find ways to sign up for our weekly e-news, uh, get more information about our ministries, and also there's a, a way that you can donate to our ministries there. If you have a pastoral care concern, I invite you to reach out to me at michelle at mankatocentenary.org. Pastor Erica offers a children's story at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays on our Facebook page, and Lydia offers a children's time at 9.45 on Sunday mornings on our YouTube page. Pastor Erica and I both offer an Advent prayer Monday through Friday at 5.01 on our Facebook page. And this is a time for us to light an Advent candle and, um, and, th <laughs> and, th and think about the season and, uh, and share a brief reading. Now I invite you to just take a deep breath and settle in. And here are our prayers for today. Our prayers of compassion. Lord, as we wait in darkness for a glimmer of light, May we be aware of those who are waiting with us, and may we extend a foretaste of your love through our radical welcome. We pray for the work of Holy Grounds and the Connection Shelter, and we lift up the work of those who share our building, including the Minnesota Council of Churches and Ark of Minnesota. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayers of justice. Lord, in a world where many cannot see the flicker of hope on the horizon, May we be light carriers, working for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayers of worship. Lord, as we gather each week in the season of Advent, remind us of your eternal light and how it continues to spark and glow as we come together to worship you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers of devotion. Lord, as we look deep within ourselves, help us to see the new thing that you are doing in our lives. Help us to seek your wisdom and guidance as we turn in devotion to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now prayers for our church community. We offer prayers for healing for Bob Bench and Marianne Bench, for Yvonne and Carl Tottleben, for Marcin Klunder, for Rachel Worley's father, for Kenna Gibson's brother-in-law, Dennis McMillan, and for all those who are dealing with COVID diagnosis. And now let us join together in the familiar words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Candle lighting for the second Sunday in Advent, 2020. We light two candles against the dark. Flames flickering together, justice and peace shine clear. Insistent, persistent signs that darkness will not abide here.
The scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 33. Now, when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to Mary, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. Now, Mary was confused by these words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel then said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his forefather. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Thus ends the reading of the word. Oh, that light was piercing, unlike anything I've ever seen before. On such a dark and moonless night, the light that Gabriel bounced off of my walls pulled me from a deep sleep. <laughs> I was blissfully dreaming about Joseph and the life that we have planned together. I have never been jolted from sleep like that before. I kind of wonder if it was a dream. Something in me, though, knows that it wasn't. I sat up in my bed, and there was an angel in my bedroom. The light was blinding, but it was also enchanting, and I could not look away. But now he has left me, and I have been plunged into darkness. With him went the warmth and the glow, and now I am left with only the light of my candle and the moonless night once again creeping in around me, leaving me cold and scared and alone. He said the Lord found favor with me. He told me not to be afraid, and yet he told me that I would become pregnant, me, a virgin, through the work of the Holy Spirit. And while he made it sound simple enough, it's terrifying what I would give in this moment to have that light back in this room, wrapping me in the calm that it brought. And maybe if I could ask more questions, get a better understanding of what this really means. What is the timeline? What is the plan? Will I experience pain or joy? Will I know when it happens? How long must I wait? Maybe if I had answer to, to some of these questions, the waiting for this moment to happen wouldn't be so daunting. <laughs> I am thrilled that the Lord has found favor with me, but, but why me? Why was I chosen to carry the Son of God? I am just a normal girl, making plans to marry Joseph and get settled and build a house and then maybe someday further down the road to start a family. But not like this, not this way. This is not what I had planned. This is turning my whole world upside down. What will
will Joseph think? How will I ever tell my parents? <laughs> I will become the laughing stock of this community. <laughs> Do you tell people, oh, I'm carrying the son of God? They'll think I'm crazy <laughs> on top of everything else. <sighs> God, why me? Why this? Why now? I have been your faithful servant. I try so hard to live my life according to your teaching. But how does this plan of yours even make sense? Out of a whole world of people, you have chosen me, a boring, average, normal girl from Nazareth, to carry your son? Lord, I do not understand. I do not know what to expect. I am so scared. I feel like the darkness is taunting me, taunting me to find answers to questions that are too big to comprehend. Answers that lie as close as my fingertips and yet feel unanswerable. God, are you here? Are you here in my fear and in my uncertainty? Is it truly the darkness of my womb that you see the possibility of new life? Weren't there better candidates out there, God? Weren't there more people who maybe have their lives more put together, who are already married, who won't become a stigma to society? who have a deep faith, why me? Why are you choosing me, God? And how long do I have to wait to find the answers to your questions? <laughs> Gabriel, pretty bold of him to just show up in my bedroom with this kind of news. I wonder, I wonder if he knows what this news has done to me and what it will do to my life. I wonder if there was something more he could have said to me. Now he did say that Elizabeth, Elizabeth, my aunt who is very far along in her years is going to have a baby also. This is all such curious, confusing and puzzling information. But the more that I sit here the more that the cold and the dark wrap around me, I can still feel that glow and that presence inside. I remember now, I remember the true utter peace I felt when Gabriel was in my presence. In that moment, well, I did still question the possibility and the probability of all of this great plan, I was certain of one thing. I was certain of God. <sighs> Maybe I have let this darkness take the better of me. It's easy to forget the promise that Gabriel made to me that God is with me. And as I said, when Gabriel's light began to leave the room and I grasped for it, I am ready, I am ready to serve the Lord. Let it be with me just as you say. <laughs> I can see the first hints of dawn on the horizon. Those fingers of dawn seem to be pushing the cold out of my room. Perhaps the fear and the dread will be replaced with anticipation maybe even with hope. God has chosen me. Me, lowly Mary, to carry the Son of God. And if God can do that in my life, imagine what God can do in the world. Maybe there is hope in waiting. Maybe there is light that breaks through the darkness. God is using plain and ordinary 
to do something truly extraordinary. There is hope in this new life, this new life that I will carry in my heart and in my womb. Light and dark, angels and edicts, fear and hope, the unknown and the possible. It is all right here, cradled in God's hand. God, my prayer for today is may there be joy in this new beginning, in this upending of life as I know it. God, I trust you are with me. I trust you are here. I trust you are the light in my darkness. It can